Hey y'all, I'm Catherine. I am a Saint makeup enthusiast. I love getting on here and sharing my love of this makeup and sharing tips and tricks. We're just going to get started and today it's about Saint makeup and texture. There's no makeup that will cover texture. Texture is there, but what we can do is make your texture not so evident. I have picked my face. I wish you were here at my house so you could see that like this is really raised. These are raised. Anyway, I'm going to just do what I can to show you what I do to make them not look worse. I can get rid of the color. I can get rid of the redness, but the texture's there. You can trick the eye. You can make it so that light's not you know, reflecting off it. So let's get started. You'll see what I mean. We'll kind of touch into under eyes too. Um, I'm going to just start with my face. First of all, what I want to tell you, do your makeup as though you don't have the blemishes or the texture. Just do your makeup like normal. So I am just going to start with my contour today. This is not really the highlight contour type video as you can see i've already got half of my face done i didn't do anything special um i'm just doing regular makeup as i normally would you know okay see i'm gonna have to put my bangs up darn it i am so over my bangs y'all um with texture though i think the things that make texture worse is too much product, too light of a product, and then the finish that you're choosing. Sometimes too glowy can enhance texture. Sometimes too dry, like too powdery, can enhance texture. A lot of times we try to cover texture and pimples and zits. Um, our under eyes, we try to mask it so much that we end up putting so much product on and it makes it worse. So that's why just start, do your makeup like you normally would, as if you had the smoothest, clearest, even pigmented face. <laughs> All right, so, and I'm trying to remember and remind myself that I'm not really doing a tutorial about you know, the makeup, it's more to show you my steps that I do to not make my texture worse. So I'm just going to slather, not slather. I don't love to use that word because I don't know. I feel like it, you need a little bit more preciseness than slather. Although you don't have to be super precise and don't get too caught up in I hope this video even helps somebody out there. Please, if this video, if you make it to the end and it helped, will you let me know in the comments? <laughs> because I am not a natural teacher and I have the hardest time spitting out and explaining what's going on in my brain. And I swear in my brain, it's making sense. But then when I try to explain it, it's just like I sound like gibberish coming out. Okay, so, um, the one layer method is beautiful. It's wonderful. I know you see it with the dots and then just blending it and you have one layer and a done face. That's great. But what I recommend is you getting used to the makeup first and how much you're putting on your face, where you want the product, and then do the then try the whole one layer dot cheetah hack method. I just think with this makeup, you're already learning to do your makeup slightly different with creams, you know. You don't like don't try and teach your brain too much at once. I like personally, I'm going in with my main shade up under my eyes just a little bit. Just because I do have just a little darkness. I don't have as much as, you know, others out there, but I just like to bring my main shade up because 
my darker shade is gonna cover my blue purple better than if I went straight in with my lighter shade. I just recommend going on your under eye with your main shade and see how you like it. A lot of times if you go in with too bright of a shade right away with nothing else under it, it just ends up looking chalky, kind of gray. I'm talking too much already. Okay, so I just took a little bit of also my main shade and went down my nose because I have redness. Okay, where do I wanna go next with this? There might be a little editing. Oh, I know what I wanted to mention. If you have issues with dry under eyes, that's my main thing is I like for my under eyes to be really moisturized because when I put makeup on my under eyes I just feel like I can all of a sudden see lines and more texture than I could without makeup and I do not want that and I want to wear makeup don't say well then don't wear makeup I love makeup I'm gonna wear makeup <laughs> I really moisturize my under eyes this is the Kiehl's creamy eye treatment with avocado. This is probably like my sixth or seventh jar. I've been using this for years. I'll get recommendations from people for an eye product, but nothing I love more than that. So find an eye cream that you like for your under eyes. There will be different properties about it, different things about it that will help different things. Like I don't have bags, but there are products out there that help with that. So there's that. So we are next gonna just go in with bronzer. I really like to use bronzer. If you do not have bronzer in your palette, then just skip this step. But I love bronzer. I feel like it actually helps cover up my redness. So I use it as a tool to cover my redness. Blah, redness. As you can see, I did not contour as low, but it's kind of migrated. It's kind of made its way, but that's okay. It's all good. And then since I'm turning my head so much to show you all this, I keep seeing all the shadowing in my nose. And so I try to have more of a clean slate with my nose. I don't contour my nose much. You won't see that very much for me. I have a friend that's been trying to give me pointers, you know, on ways to do it that I like, but I just haven't. So what I do is I just take my bronzer with this fluffy end and just make sure it's not too concentrated in any of the bristles. And I just kinda, I add structure instead of contour. I don't want my nose to just be flat and blend in with the rest of my face, but I don't, I, I don't like it contoured yet, but I love watching people contour their noses. I think it's, amazing. I've got a pretty drastic bump that I have a hard time working with. But. If you ever seen a YouTube video that has helped you, if you have a similar nose as me, that's helped you contour your nose, put it in the comments. I would love to see it. Next, I'm still just going to go in with my blush, just like I normally would. Pretending I have no texture. Pretending I have no breakouts. And I always start my blush, I know I said I wasn't really gonna do a tutorial about like the makeup so much, but I start at the back and work my way up so that the there's a lesser amount of blush on my bristles once I get to the apples of my cheeks because I still like a little blush on the apples of my cheeks. I just don't like as much as back here. Does that make sense? And then I already have this half of my face done, so I wanna match the amount Looks like I got a little ham over here. <laughs> At this point, I will go in now with a little bit of my lighter shade. My lighter shade really isn't super bright. It's more neutral and just lighter than my main shade. So I will do just the tiniest bit right here. And I do the tiniest bit on the outer eye, but I don't like to do much because of my crow's feet and I don't want to enhance my crow's feet. So the lesser amount of product, 
the better. And I just tap that out with my fingers because I feel like that blends out beautifully with the heat of my body. And then I will go up here with my lighter shade, my brightener, and brighten that part up. And I've got pores here. And I did go in with my main shade first, so this is gonna be layering, but it's fine because I'm using such a small amount. But since I'm not brightening up this under eye right here, because I don't want there to be this light shade where I have so much just extra skin, I don't wanna crease. So I will go in right here with my lighter shade, almost like a triangle, like a triangle like this. And brighten up that way. I haven't even done it on this side yet. And it's just so subtle. And then it's not directly under my eye, but it's giving me just that awake look that people like with their brightener. Also, if you do have your palette and you have a main and a brightening shade and your brightening shade you feel is too light, it is okay. Take your main shade, dip into your brightening shade. You can mix them for a custom shade. It's perfect. Here, I'll use, I don't wanna waste it. So I'll just put that on my outer corner to cover up the little bit of darkness, but not too much because of the crow's feet, like I said. In person, right here, I will maybe I will zoom in once I'm editing this and I can show you. We'll see if I can zoom that in and you'll see it. There's still a little bit of redness. Okay. What I'm gonna do, I have this smudge brush. I love this brush for this step, but also eyeshadow. I'm gonna take this little domed in with my main shade and only get the, the, my, my zits that I have gotten at 43 years old. And that really ticks me off. Now you're like, well, you already put blush there. So now you look like you have skin tone circles right in the middle of your blush. Okay, so this is what you gotta be careful with. You want to be very careful applying your blush after this. So what I'll do, instead of going and applying my blush with this more dense end, I still can back here because I don't have anything I need to worry about, but I'm gonna take this lighter fluffy side because it is just gonna be more gentle and soft and I'm just gonna very gently go over that. Now I don't have the skin tone dots right on my cheek. I was able to cover it with blush, okay? But like I said, the texture is still there. There's nothing I can do about it. But since this makeup is glowy, the light might be catching it. So towards the end, I'll show you what we'll do. Now this one right here, let's see. I'll let myself in editing mode, zoom into it. Let's zoom into that daddy or mama, whatever it is. Okay, now we're gonna get started again. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take the deeper shade because I want the, the color of my makeup to match the depth of what I'm trying to cover. In high school, I totally would have probably gone in with a lighter shade, which made it worse. <laughs> I know now, I wish I could go back in time and tell me and my girlfriends that. I used to, trying to cover zits, I can remember, oh, I can remember a boy making fun of me and being like, it looks like you have a wart on your face. But I know exactly why he said that because I had put so much concealer on it and powder. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna go back in time. Okay, so I, have covered the redness by only putting it on the blemish. Okay, texture's still there though. If you feel light, so that's almost in the contour area, but not 
not quite, but I feel like I did get my, my contour did go away a little bit. So I still had some residual contour on my brush. We're gonna go. So I'm gonna just pat that. It's, I'm going above, above it. All right, moving on, okay? There's a couple ways to set. You could do powder first or setting spray first, but with blemishes, I like to use a setting spray first. The same setting spray I like on blemishes because <laughs> the second ingredient is aloe vera instead of alcohol. We're in a lot of setting sprays, alcohol is usually second after water. But the aloe vera just captures my attention every time. And I'm like, oh, it's gonna calm it and you know, my zits. And I'm not a scientist. I'm not a professional. I just like what I like. I'm gonna take this sponge, it's dampened, and I'm gonna make sure I don't have too much product. But I'm not gonna go over my blemishes because I don't want to remove what I put there. And that's what this does. This makes sure excess product gets removed. But in this case, I want a little excess. Not like too much, you know, but I need that added coverage. Under eye texture is different than blemish texture. Um, I feel like personally, your under eye texture, I feel like it is more attractive to have a little bit of color peeking through but have a nice, hydrated, um, not cakey under eye. Do, does that make sense? So I do like to remove excess product from under my eyes. It's also gonna help with creasing. So, got that. I'm gonna go in and do the powder. This is when I love the vanilla dust setting powder because it's not super, super drying where a lot of times I won't recommend this for somebody that's really oily because it probably won't keep their oils at bay. But for setting like little areas like this, if you have oily skin, I think would be great because I do think loose setting powders that are great for absorbing that oil when you're oily, I think it's too heavy to do this step. So you will just take and just, I'm using the small end, and only set where you put that average added coverage, okay? Because now it won't catch the light because of the glowiness of the makeup. It was catching the light, which kind of brought attention to your zits. So also, right in here, this is where you have your pores, well, can't speak for you, but for me. So I slightly mattify it. And this also will make it appear that your pores aren't so evident. Under eyes, I do not powder all the way up to my lower lash. What I will powder is the little divot. That's as high as I go. This is, might be different for everybody. I see some people that do set all the way under their eye and that's fine. And I know sometimes if you have a mascara that bleeds, you need to, but what I recommend you doing, then I'm getting off track here, but you can just take your um, powder and just do your lower lash and that might help your mascara not bleed. So just remember the moral of this story <laughs> is that there's no makeup that is going to get rid of your texture. Oh my gosh, my foot, oh. Oh my God, I can't feel it. I cannot feel my foot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, oh, moral of, okay, I already said that. Makeup's not gonna get rid of your texture. So just try to not make it worse. This is baby watermelon and I'm using it with Bella Bronza. Since this is a satin, I like to go over just with a gloss. I do feel like I don't have quite as much 
blush on this side. So don't be scared to go back in. And just be careful where you put that product. You don't want to move it. So, ta-da, that's it. I don't even know if I put makeup on my eyelids. So this, I think, is gonna have to be quite edited. But just remember, don't use too much product. Don't use too light of a product. And watch the finish of what you're using. Very natural look, but I don't feel like I'm bringing too much attention to this side. Maybe I'll do some zoomy action here. Remember, if you made it to this point, let me know in the comments if it was helpful. I would love to know. All right, well, come visit me over on Instagram. I am at catunfiltered33. And then I will put my link tree, but it's not going to be clickable because, you know, I have like 20 subscribers, maybe not even. So I, I can't do clickable links. So you will have to copy and paste it and put it in your browser. I know. But uh, yeah, I would love to help you get matched with your palette, with your own colors. So, all right. I will talk to you later. Have a great weekend. Bye.